Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. We are looking at a problem um, that has to do with a proportion, given a table, a proportional table, and then graphing uh, the results that we come up with and um, going from there. So we're, I'm, I'm pulling this question from, this is um, from CPM and it's course two, CC2. Uh, this is section 4.2.3, specifically number 4-50. Okay. So it says, complete the proportion table below and graph the results. So we have a table here. And it tells me it's a proportion. So that's good. Proportion means it has a constant rate, right? There's a unit rate we can find. And that might help us. So our constant rate. It also means that doubling when I think about values works. So in other words, if I, I'll do that right here, if I know six and 258, so I know that the six pounds of nails cost me $2 and 58 cents. If it's proportional, I could cut these both in half to find three. So six and, and half is three. So what is $2 and 58 cents in half? That would be, let's see, that's going to be one dollar and 29 so one dollar and 29 cents right so if six is two dollars and 58 cents three would be one dollar and 29 cents right so that that gives me that value so let's see what else we have here what else can we utilize here uh so i can I can also find my unit rate, right? If I know there's six pounds of nails for that as my cost, the question is how much is one pound of nails cost, right? And I know I don't see that on my graph here, but I'm gonna, on the side, I wanna know what is my unit rate. On, I don't see it on my table, so I'm gonna come up with that unit rate. So how do I find the unit rate? I wanna know the cost for one pound. Right. I want to know the cost for one and I, LB is pound, one pound. That's my unit rate. So that being said, I divide because I want this to be a one. Right. I want that to be a one. Right now, I have this as a ratio. I have two dollars and 58 cents for six pounds. That's that's the given. So to get it to be one pound. I look at this as a division situation where I have to, in this case, divide six by six to get the one. So therefore divide this by six, right? I, I have to divide both by six in order to get it to be that unit rate. Okay. So what is 258 divided by six is the question. Now, if we've got a calculator, we can use that. But if you need a little bit of uh, practice on dividing using the long division algorithm, here we go. So how many times does six go into two dollars and fifty eight cents? Right. When we're dividing with the by into a decimal, you bring the decimal up. We know that's going to be zero because two doesn't go into the six doesn't go into two at all. So six goes now. We look at the twenty five. It goes in there four times. Multiply. You get twenty four. Subtract. Bring down the one or the one or five minus four is one. Bring down the eight, and we can see that six goes into eighteen uh, forty three. So three times. So forty three cents. So my unit rate is how many it's going to be 40 oops that should be there so it's 43 cents so it's 43 cents per pound that's my unit rate all right let me write that better someplace else so it's 43 cents per pound that's my unit rate Okay, that's going to be helpful for me to then I can complete this table because if it's 43 cents per pound, now I've just got to look at seeing, okay, what it would it be for two pounds? Well, for two pounds, it would just be multiply that. What is two times 43 cents? Well, that happens to be 84 cents. I don't have a lot of room here, so I'm going to put it, overlap it. So that's 84 cents, right? It, oh, excuse me, 86 cents, not 84. There we go, 86 cents. 2 times 8, 43 is 86. Okay, so now I'm thinking, now how do I determine what is 
this. I want to know how many pounds is $2.15. A few ways I could look at it. I could take and divide that by 43 cents to see how many times 43 cents goes into 215. Or I can look and see, oh, sure enough, 258. If I subtract 258 by 43 cents, right, I get 215. So if that's one less, one pound less, when I think about the cost, that would be then five, wouldn't it? And to verify, five times 43 cents is $2.15. So now I've got to go and look here and think to myself, well, what's true? How do I find this number? This is 344. Again, I could take my 43 cents and divide it into 344 to determine how many times. Or if I just look at my uh, some of the um, relationships here, right? So if I think about um, this six, Actually, uh, oh, I like these two. Look at these two. So if I add one twenty nine and two fifteen, one dollar and twenty nine cents plus two fifteen is three forty four, isn't it? Because one and two make three. Twenty nine cents, fifteen cents, add up to be forty four cents. So that being said, what do I have? Three pounds and and five pounds. So this would be eight pounds. Okay. So then, what is ten pounds? Well, to determine 10 pounds, I could then take the 10 and multiply it by 43 cents. And when you multiply anything by 10, remember it's a nice move that decimal place once over. So it's 4.3 and put a zero at the end to make it into money, $4.30. Oh, and I see a relationship here, $4.30, $8.60. What do you notice? It's doubled, isn't it? If I multiply $4.30 times two, if I multiply that, times two, I would get that. So therefore, if it's 10 pounds here, this would be 20 pounds. All right, hopefully that you followed some of that math and saw how I completed the table. So now what's interesting is they have X. What if it's X amount of pounds? Well, what did I do each, each time I knew the poundage, like here, if I knew it was 10 and I needed to find how much money it was, what did I do? I multiplied it, right? So if I know my pounds, all I need to do is take the pounds and multiply it times 43 cents. So I'm going to say this is going to be 0 0.43 times X. And when you show multiplication, you just put the variable next to the number to show that that means multiply. This is 43 cents times X, right? The X itself is not times. It's the, you're multiplying times that X is a variable. All right. So I got my table filled out. Now I got to complete the graph. This is an interesting graph because uh, we're looking at our axes are already built. And, and why am I using these axes, right? Normally, you, you have a graph that goes on and on in both directions when you talk about the, the uh, axes, right? The axes, this is your y axes. And then this here is your x axes. So your x and y axes. When we look at our table, keep in mind your, your first column, our first row is always x. Your second row is always your y. This is your independent variable. This is your dependent. And you always have your independent variable on your horizontal. So I'm going to label this. This is going to be my pounds of nails. So what would be my scale? If I want to get all the way up to 20 and, and graph everything, can I, if I just go by one, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I guess I could. So I can go by ones and all the way here would be 20. Uh, so I'm just going to count by twos. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just labeling the evens just to save room. As long as I know each mark is worth one and it is because I'm going every other to mark the evens going by twos. All right. So that's my pounds of nails on my X axis on my horizontal axes. So my cost if you look at my cost, I get all the way up to 20 would be $8.60. So when I'm dealing with coins, with pennies, down to the penny, you know, I, I, I'm going to have to do a little bit of estimating on where I'm going to be on the graph. So to make life easier, at least I'll spread it out as much as I can. So if I wanted to get up to, say, 10, $10, right, I can go by 50 cents, right? So this would be one dollar so this would be a, a 50 cents right here right i don't need to mark it but i'm just i am just to say that's what that would be 
then this would be a dollar fifty. This would be two dollars, right? This would be two fifty. This would be three dollars. This would be four three fifty. This would be four dollars. Five, six, seven, eight, nine dollars, right? And so this, I'll put my label here. My this is going to be the cost on this side, and it's in dollars. So that's my label. Make sure you're labeling your axes. Now I can graph. How do you graph these points? Well, let's start with our first point here, which is two. So at two pounds of nails, it's 86 cents. So here's my two pounds of nails. Where's 86? This is, again, where you're going to have to estimate. If that's 50 cents, that's a dollar. 86 would be just a little bit more than half, right? So that right there is $2 at 86 cents. I'll just put a nice big point there to show that's where that one is. So what about three? Three dollars, excuse me, three pounds is at a dollar twenty-nine. So here's three, right? Since this is two, this is three. So at three pounds, I go up to a dollar twenty-nine, which is not more than half. It's below half, so it's right about there. Uh, five. So here's my five, right? I didn't have it marked, but I'll just for the sake of showing it here, that's where five is, right? Five and two fifteen. So where's two fifteen? Well, this is two dollars, so fifteen cents, and just to be a little bit above it. Uh, what do I also have? I have six, and six is at two fifty eight, which is just above fifty cents. Two fifty, right? This is where two fifty is. So that's two fifty eight approximately. I have eight, so at eight, I'm at three dollars and forty four cents, which is below fifty. So this is three fifty right there. So I'm going to put it right about there, below, right below fifty. At 10, I'm at 430, right? So 430. So where's 450 is here? And 10 was right about there. So there I'm going to go below it to 430. And then my last one, 20, I have is at uh, 860. So 20 goes up at 20. Uh, there's 8. And then there's 850. So 860 would be just above. Okay. So how do I then show this as a continued, continued pattern, right? So I am going to graph it with a, with a line. I'm going to connect my dots because what's true is why do I connect them? Because I want to show that these are all the possible costs per pound, right? So if I think about where I'm at, um, oh, first let me ask. Is there zero, zero? This is a proportion, right? So zero, zero does exist. I do have, and I don't have it in my table, but at zero pounds, I would have zero cost. So that's a point there. So I can, if I think about where I'm at, I should have all my dots in a, in a line and I could then connect them with a line, okay? So this is just showing that pattern of solutions. So what's true, I don't have, I don't have points. I don't have values in my graph between 10 and 20, but they exist, right? I can buy 14 pounds of nails and it would be approximately right here, which is just above $6, right? So you can see that those values exist in this pattern. And then what we always do too, is on a on a, any type of a problem, yeah, my grid is done, but does it does the value still increase? Yeah, I can I can have more than 20 pounds, I could have 40 pounds. I could have 50 pounds, right? It would still, and then that, this ratio of uh, pounds per dollar or, or that relationship continues on. So I throw an arrow on the graph to show it continues. All right. Oh, I'm not quite done. Sorry. What is the unit rate down here? What is the unit rate? Well, we already did the unit rate. We did that up here. Uh, so our unit rate we said was 43 cents per pound then it says what does the unit rate price tell you about the cost of nails so the unit rate cost of nails it just it tells you the price per one pound the unit rate says that it's 43 cents per one pound that's what the unit rate price tells you about the cost of nails so it's that cost per one pound okay there you go